Well, uh, what can you say? Uh, yeah, if you watched my pregame show earlier in the week, uh, I did pick Oklahoma to play much better in this game than they did last year against the Buckeyes. In no way, shape, or form, though, that I think they were going to win this game. Only because of the Urban Meyer factor and the fact that Ohio State, you know, dominated last year's game and because of the fact that the game was played in Columbus. Second largest crowd ever, by the way, to watch a game in that historical stadium. And Urban Meyer usually wins games like this. And for Lincoln Riley, only his second game as Sooner head coach. But Lincoln Riley tonight, tell you what, the Sooners prepared like they had been in these types of games before, even though in some spots it's a young team. The Sooners came ready to play. This was so different than what we saw last year, which last year we saw Ohio State outplay, out-execute, out-coach the Sooners. Tonight was a lot different. Matter of fact, you could easily say in that first half that the Sooners should have come away with a lot more points than just three. You know, five drives that ended in Ohio State territory, only one field goal, a missed field goal, two fourth downs that went awry, and a fumble by Abdul Adams. And then we, I don't think we saw him after that, but Trey Sermon came in and stepped up. So, yeah, there were four possessions that were empty for Oklahoma, which could have eventually resulted in the points, maybe touchdowns. Didn't matter, though, because you had some things going for Oklahoma in this game when other things didn't. For example, in that first half, the Oklahoma defense did one heck of a job. In fact, Ohio State in that first half, only 92 total yards. You credit Oklahoma being able to make JT Barrett make quick decisions at times. And the fantastic play by Obo. I'm so proud of him, able to get to JT Barrett on a couple of occasions with sacks. And even when the Sooners couldn't get to Barrett in terms of sacks, they were at least able to hurry him a little bit. And it was not a great night for Barrett as far as passing. That was the case throughout the game, but you credit Oklahoma a lot for that. The secondary, Parnell Motley, one heck of a job at corner. This is a big upgrade from what we'd seen in the past. And, of course, Jordan Thomas held his own on the other side. So you can tell that this defense for the Sooners under Mike Stoops, that this year we're seeing them swarm to the ball a lot better than what we saw last year. Last year was a disaster at times, but still got 10 games left to go. But so far, if you're a Sooner fan, you have to love what you've seen from this defense, the play of Caleb Kelly, terrific. And then you saw the defensive line, Gallimore, uh, doing a good job. And, you know, you, you're looking, too, at the uh, you know the new safety, Will Johnson. Used to be a nickelback. Will Johnson, his name was called several times tonight. So the defense, um, yeah, there were times which they gave up some good-sized runs. But as far as passing, I mean, it was largely a one-dimensional attack for Ohio State. Just what you wanted if you're a senior fan. Yeah, it was 3-3 three three at halftime. Yeah, Sooners hadn't scored a touchdown yet, but at least they were able to move the ball. Baker Mayfield's play throughout the night was terrific, especially in that second half when his team needed him the most. I thought the most pivotal part of this game was when Ohio State had just, you know, started that second half with that big kickoff return and then eventually would lead to a J.K. Dobbins touchdown. 10-3, to 3, Ohio State. Crowds at a fever pitch, momentum's with the Buckeyes, and then the Sooners come right back and are able to show Ohio State that, hey, we didn't just come here to make a good showing on Saturday night. We came here to make a great showing. That's what you said to Ohio State, and then eventually you saw the Sooners respond with a massive touchdown march ended with that Dimitri Flowers touchdown catch, tying the game up. And, yeah, Ohio State would get a field goal after that, but there were no more touchdowns for the Buckeyes. A fantastic effort by the defense and by the offense in using the running backs as receivers. And this was something that Ohio State had a hard time containing all night, was Oklahoma's ability to make plays happen with the running backs as receivers. Trey Sermon and, of course, Dimitri Flowers. I counted at least nine catches tonight by Oklahoma running backs. That's a pivotal part of the Lincoln-Riley offense to loosen that defense up, and it worked. The play of C.D. Lamb tonight receiver was terrific, and, of course, using that speed advantage of the veteran Jeff Bidette who did good things at Kentucky, and now in his senior year, the transfer from UK coming to Oklahoma, and he had a good game too. But Baker Mayfield, wow. Um, he still has not lost a true road game, ladies and gentlemen. He still hasn't. And throwing for nearly 400 yards against a very good defense and being able to survive that front seven of Ohio State, which we know how good they are. And, you know, Baker we know has one big game, like I said. But this one... Boy, you can chalk it right up to right at the top of the list in terms of marquee wins because, again, you're going against the number two team in the country in their backyard. And we know what Ohio State, with 70% of that team back, 
from the year before, 15 or 22 starters. So in a large way, not completely, but in a large way, you're going against the same team, including the same quarterback. And Baker Mayfield handled the pressure well and was able to handle some some injury difficulty too. I think you know uh, Kirk and Chris were calling the game for ABC said it was uh, related to cramps. Um, but Baker Mayfield was going to be damned if he was going to come out of this game. He was going to lead his team, and especially in that second half, we saw Baker do just that. Oklahoma with 28 points in the second half. Two touchdowns in the third and two in the fourth quarter. Um, again, I, I'm, I'm so proud of, of Obo, of Parnell, of, of those guys. And on offense, you know, the offensive line starting to really uh, take control of the game. And remember, Oklahoma had almost 19 yards of time of possession that first half. And I think that that became a factor in the second half because Ohio State, uh, their, their defense was starting to maybe show a little bit of fatigue late in the third quarter and in the fourth when the ground game for the Sooners was becoming a little bit more um, of a weapon for this team. So I know most of the yards tonight came in passing in terms of Oklahoma. Overall, though, this offense can take pride that they did one heck of a job against a good Ohio State defense and, and did it soundly. Um, so the Sooners overcome first half missed opportunities. And in the second half, turn it up a notch. And for Lincoln Riley, my gosh, <laughs> just a second game as head coach, and you beat a future coaching Hall of Famer in um, Urban Meyer. And the best coach, by the way, right now in college football, if you don't count Nick Saban. Um, and you have a feeling that more big wins are coming for Lincoln Riley in his career. So there is an old saying, though, all right? And I'm not being a negative Nancy. As a matter of fact, um, like I said, I admit I was wrong, you know, and – if, if Sooner fans say, well, you were just using reverse psychology when you picked Ohio State to win by seven, okay, I'll go with that. <laughs> but there is an old saying, it is harder for a team to handle success than it is adversity. Now the Sooners realize that they're going to shoot up higher in the polls now, okay? And realizing that there's not really a big challenger on this schedule for a few weeks because you got Tulane coming up and you got Baylor for the conference opener and then Iowa State after that. So the Sooners should be okay for a little bit. But as the season wears along, you know, you know that big bullseye is going to be on the back of their, of their, you know, on their back or on their chest. And teams are going to be gunning for them more than ever. Big thing is, the Sooners, the approach that they had tonight when it came to beating Ohio State, that has to, again, be a part of this team throughout the season. You can't let your guard down not even one hair or you're going to wind up with the big L on your resume. The Sooners get a big statement win, but there's still big games down the road. Texas always seems to play Oklahoma with this big, you know, we don't win this game, we're going to die type approach. It's been that way for the last four years. Sooners still cannot take Texas lightly. At Kansas State won't be easy. At Oklahoma State and TCU looking a little bit better than what we thought after their thumping of Arkansas on the road earlier today. So that's another nice win for the Big 12. And today was, you know, not just a Terrific win for Oklahoma, which is obvious, but for the Big 12, and, you know, I'm one of those that said that it is a, a joke of a conference for a major conference because it's not really fared very well. And it's had some teams that have just not really looked good, okay? So in terms of the national perspective, the Big 12 has deserved just about all the criticism that they've received. But for today, Big 12 can hold their head up and say, hey, we're pretty good. Sooners, 31, Ohio State, 16 for the Buckeyes. Again, I'm not prepared to say anybody is out when you lose a game involving top five teams. Um, I'm not going to say that they're mathematically eliminated because if they run the table in the Big Ten, um, who knows what might happen. But obviously that's what Ohio State's going to have to do. They're going to have to beat the Penn State. They're going to have to beat the, I think they play Iowa later. they got to beat Michigan. And if they get to the Big Ten championship game, they're going to have to beat Wisconsin in all likelihood. You know, it won't be an easy task at all um, for the Ohio State University, but Oklahoma gets the victory tonight and a victory that can go a long, long way toward getting to that college football playoff. Proud of the Sooners, and again, I was wrong on my prediction, but I'm glad I was wrong. I'll, I'll take being wrong like that all the time. Baker Mayfield, terrific. Flowers, terrific. Motley, terrific. Oboe, terrific. And, and so many others that played a pivotal role in this signature win for the Sooners. 2-0. Tulane coming up next week. Don't try to channel surf for it. It's on pay-per-view. If you don't have the 50 bucks to pay for the game, simply put, 
go to a pub or restaurant or see if your friends or family are watching the game at their place. If so, there you go. 31-16, so proud of this Oklahoma team. And for Ohio State, there, there's no, no question that they miss Curtis Samuel and Noah Brown, who left early for the NFL. But they can't take anything away from the great effort that the Sooners had tonight on both sides of the ball. And now this perspective for this OU season changes from it being just a real good season to now this could be a pretty special team. Still 10 games to go, but for tonight, it was the Sooners' night and a huge win at the Horseshoe in Columbus. Boomer Sooner.